Hello, everyone. My name is Aditya Mishra, and I'm a master's student at UCLA, and I'm also one of the two DigiKey ambassadors for UCLA. And today, I'm going to give a very high-level overview on occupancy detection. And more specifically, I'm going to talk about the differences between PIR and millimeter wave sensing for occupancy detection. This is what we're going to be talking about today. We're first going to talk about what exactly occupancy detection is, and then we're going to briefly cover what different types of technologies can be used for occupancy detection. We're going to go through a high-level overview of what PIR sensing is and what millimeter wave sensing is. Uh, we're going to start to compare and contrast the two, and ultimately, I hope all this information ends up uh, giving you some sort of result on which one of these sensors is right for you. So let's get started. What exactly is occupancy detection? So occupancy detection is sort of this hidden magic that's weaving through our modern world. So from smart homes that anticipate our needs to efficient workplaces adjusting to our presence, uh, occupancy, occupancy detection's touch is pretty much everywhere. It fuels energy savings, security enhancements, and seamless automation. And furthermore, it paints the future where spaces respond to us before we even ask. And the reality is it's already here. It's used so frequently in our everyday lives, you probably don't even notice it. So if you take a look at the left, you can see that at this Costco wholesale, long lines for gas are made way more efficient with the use of these occupancy detection systems. The, the use of these occupancy detection systems makes the customer experience way better while making the customer, uh, while making the company more money. Everything's more efficient. And additionally on the right, it's more of a funny example, but these automated doors that are present in pretty much every business uh, make life way easier for the customer and also save energy for all these uh, companies. So it saves the company money, it's better for the environment and it's better for the customer. These occupancy detection systems are everywhere and they're growing and their use is growing every day. So with this, let's briefly talk about what type of technologies can actually be used for occupancy detection itself? PIR and millimeter wave are not the only two technologies that can be used. So there are many different mechanisms that enable occupancy detection. And the goal of this article is to introduce many of these examples and just take a deep dive on two of them, which are gonna be PIR and millimeter wave. So first, let's talk about passive infrared sensors or PIR sensors. So these detect changes in infrared radiation that are caused by body heat or any heat. They are commonly used in motion activated lighting systems and security alarms, and they're very popular for maker and DIY applications. This is actually one of the reasons we're gonna be taking a deep dive into PIR sensors. Uh, there are, these are very readily available on DigiKey, and I'll be linking some of those uh, in the description below. Uh, next, we have ultrasonic sensors. These are something. These are sensors that you might be very familiar with. So ultrasonic sensors emit sound waves and then measure the reflection off objects. Ultrasonic sensors are very easy to use. They're just plug and play and Arduino and lots of other microcontrollers support them. Uh, and as a result, uh, a lot of new engineers and students use or have used ultrasonic sensors for their projects. Uh, in this robot, in this diagram, these eyes are actually ultrasonic sensors right here. Uh, it's pretty cool. So next we're gonna talk about millimeter waves or microwave sensors. So these emit microwave pulses, so uh, very small wavelengths, and analyze, and analyze the reflected signal to detect changes in movement. They are commonly used in automatic door systems, just as the example with the Jedi I showed earlier. And a group of researchers even came up with a way to actually use these millimeter uh, wave sensors to maintain social distancing during the pandemic. Uh, so in this diagram right here, on the left, you can see three people. And on the right, you can see three representations of these people in 3D space. These representations were created only with millimeter wave uh, sensing technology. No camera data or anything that could potentially uh, uh, I don't know, violate your privacy was used here. All this is just sensor data. And as you can see, uh, these two people on the right are way too close together. So that's why their like bodies are highlighted in red in the representation of their space. It's pretty cool stuff. And it's being used more by researchers every day. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about are cameras. Uh, I included thermal cameras in this discussion because of course, they can be used for occupancy detection. Unfortunately, they're a little bit expensive, 
uh, and there aren't as many systems for occupancy detection using them. But in this image right here, you can see a very uh, common example of cameras being used for occupancy detection. So lots of advanced image processing algorithms can detect occupancy uh, by analyzing the video feed for movement or just to check if something is located in a specific spot. Uh, as you can see, this camera occupancy detection mechanism is very effective, but unfortunately the hardware can be expensive. So this makes it sort of unsuitable for DIY or smart home applications. There are cost-effective smart cameras available. Uh, you can find them on DigiKey, but they are not super intuitive to use. In this diagram, you can see an example of a parking lot occupancy detection system. Uh, it was developed by the folks at Vizzo.ai. As you can see, all the available parking lot spots uh, are marked in green, whereas all the ones with the car already in them are marked in red. Uh, this can be used for, uh, to see how long someone's been parking. Let's say it's like a paid parking spot uh, and you don't wanna take anyone's tickets. You can just use a camera to see how long they've been sitting there, or you can just be used for anyone coming into a parking lot to see how many spots are available and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see, there's definite uh, very good use cases here. The next one that I find super interesting is actually a pressure sensor. So uh, pressure sensitive mats on floors or uh, on seats can detect occupancy by measuring the pressure exerted by a person's weight. Uh, in this diagram, you can see how car seats actually use this to determine if someone is on the seat. And from there, they use the pressure sensor data to determine how much tension to use for the seat case in case of an accident. So right here, you can see that the pressure sensor is used to sort of induce a feedback loop to determine how much tension should be used in case of an accident. Uh, too much tension or too little tension is very undesirable in the case of an accident. So the weight of the person is used uh, as input for the pressure sensor data to determine how much slack should be used on a seatbelt. Very cool stuff. And finally, machine learning and AI are very, very, uh, are at the forefront of a lot of uh, occupancy, uh, occupancy sensing mechanisms. So by analyzing data from all the different sensors that I mentioned earlier, along with many other sources, including historical data, uh, machine learning algorithms can actually learn patterns of occupancy and make really accurate uh, predictions. So sort of all complex occupa uh, occupation detection mechanisms have an integration of machine learning and AI along with sensor data. Uh, in this diagram right here, you can see that mach like this, this is an example of millimeter wave sensing technology being integrated with machine learning. Uh, you can see that it is not possible to see this person right here with the human eye. However, with the use of uh, millimeter wave sensing data and machine learning, you can actually track this person who's over 50 meters away uh, and filter out all the unnecessary information that could be blocking uh, your occupancy tracking mechanisms. Really cool stuff, but unfortunately it's not something that is very easy to enable. In the future, as machine learning and AI become more and more prevalent, in the next 10 years, this may become uh, the easiest way to actually do this even at home. But that sort of concludes a brief overview of all the different occupancy sensing mechanisms. And now we're gonna start our deep dive into PIR and millimeter wave technologies. Uh, these are two ways that are these are two mechanisms that are really easy to enable at home and are already being used on a lot of smart home applications. But I feel like a lot of people don't really understand them. So let's first talk about PIR. So what exactly is it? All objects with a temperature above absolute zero emit some sort of infrared radiation. So PIR sensors then detect this radiation. And once they detect this radiation, they can use that data for occupancy sensing. So a PIR sensor is made of the following elements. So there's a sensor element, which is shown right here. Uh, this is pretty much just pyroelectric material that can generate voltage when it's uh, exposed to rapid temperature changes. And then there's a Fresnel lens, and this is used to focus the incoming infrared radiation into the sensor element. There's a lot of different radiation everywhere. So if it can focus some specific infrared radiation to make the sensor perform better, uh, that's always very useful. And of course, something that's not included in this diagram is actually the circuitry that is attached to this PIR sensor. So uh, usually the data, the raw data that goes to the PIR sensor is not very clean and it's not very usable. 
there's all sorts of surrounding circuitry that will amplify the sensor output and convert it to a much more usable signal. And this is very important in the case of PIR, PIR sensors because they're very susceptible to thermal changes in the environment. So all this cleanup of noise is a very necessary process. Uh, so as you can see from this diagram, PIR sensors work on the concept of detecting changes in infrared radiation patterns in their field of view. In this example, a human crosses over in the field of view. And because of that, you can see a changing radiation pattern, a changing infrared radiation pattern right here. Uh, that's pretty much how it works at a very high level. So now let's talk about what exactly is millimeter wave sensing. So millimeter wave sensors operate between 24 gigahertz and 100 gigahertz, which is uh, sort of the millimeter frequency range. Those, these sensors emit electromagnetic waves, which then bounce off of objects and return to the sensor. By analyzing these reflected signals, millimeter wave sensors can gather information about presence, distance, speed, and even the angle of objects within their field of view with more complicating millimeter wave sensing. Uh, more complicated millimeter wave sensors often employ multiple, multiple antennas and they do beam forming to control the phase and amplitude of signals emitted from the antennas. Uh, this allows you to focus very specifically on a certain object to get more information regarding the speed, direction, angle of the object. Uh, lots of other data can be gathered with millimeter waves. So the way that it actually measures distance is through this measurement called time of flight. So the time it takes for the emitted waves to travel to the object and back is known as time of flight. And this measurement, along with the speed of light, because remember, all these waves are just radio waves which travel at the speed of light, uh, allows the sensor to calculate the distance to each object accurately. Uh, and this data can be used to just detect the exact location of an object in space. And what's really interesting is with more advanced sensing, uh, the Doppler effect can actually be used to determine the speed of an object in a sensor's field of view. By analyzing the frequency shift, the sensor can determine the speed of an object or determine if motion is occurring in an environment or not. And that can lead to really interesting use cases like this one right here. So this was put out by Seed Studio. Uh, Seed Studios are the developers of a very widely used millimeter wave sensor. Uh, and this is just an example that shows uh, how occupancy detection is done with millimeter wave. The light turned green when the guy entered the room. He's reading right now, he's moving. So it's still happy, it detects motion. It notices that the guy is studying. After a while, the guy gets tired. He's about to fall asleep. But when he falls asleep, he's no longer moving. And then the sensor can actually sense that. So a buzzer and the red light are, are flashing. So the guy wakes up and he can continue studying again. It's a really easy, really simplistic use of a millimeter wave sensor, but it works very well just to, just for occupancy detection purposes. So now we've sort of showcased, let me go to the next slide. Now we sort of showcased what exactly millimeter wave sensors are and what PIR sensors are and how they both uh, work respectively. Now let's take a look and compare the two of them. So of course, both millimeter wave sensors and PIR sensors can be used for occupancy detection, but there are some differences between the two that definitely should be considered. Uh, PIR sensors tend to work better with warm bodies. Uh, so with like things with IR radiation, things that are warm. However, millimeter wave radars uh, tend to be more object agnostic. So this means if you're looking for an application that is only tracking humans, Maybe PIR sensors are the way to go because they sort of specialize in that area. Uh, and additionally, if you're trying to track maybe like a, a chair moving into the room, let's say maybe you have a Roomba and you're trying to just track to see if that Roomba is entering a room, uh, PIR sensors may not work as well because those objects don't necessarily have as much heat and therefore less uh, IR radiation. So millimeter wave radars might be better for those applications. Additionally, PIR sensors typically have a sh much shorter detection range, uh, just a few meters in, compared to, in comparison to millimeter wave radar sensors, which can go uh, like greater than 10 meters. And in that, in that example I showed earlier, it was actually able to perform tracking at a distance of 50 meters. So millimeter wave radar sensors have a very high accuracy in detecting and tracking objects distance and speed whereas PIR sensors primarily detect motion. So even if you're standing still in, a, in an environment, a millimeter wave radar uh, can detect you. 
Whereas for PIR sensors, that's a little bit more difficult because they primarily detect motion. They detect changing infrared, uh, infrared measurements as we showed earlier. So both PIR sensors and millimeter wave radar sensors can be used for occupancy detection, but they just have different levels of information and accuracy. And this is a very important consideration to have when you're deciding on what project you want to work on. Uh, of course, PIR sensors are very, very suitable for basic occupancy detection. They're very cost effective and very simple to deploy. Uh, and they're used uh, very often in, in real life situations like uh, automatic light just turning on when someone enters the room or maybe adjusting a the thermostat if it detects if someone's in the room. But if you want to do something more complex, then maybe a millimeter wave radar sensor is better for you. Uh, millimeter wave radar sensors offer much more advanced capabilities, uh, but unfortunately, these advanced capabilities can often come at the cost of additional complexity to the user. Uh, these sensors can detect occupancy, number of occupants, distance from the center, uh, movement speed, and they can just get a lot more information compared to a PIR sensor. Now, this additional information comes at, multiple, at many different types of costs. First, an economical cost. These millimeter wave sensors tend to be significantly more expensive, often double the price of most PIR sensors. So if you have maybe 10 rooms in your house, uh, you might want to use PIR sensors in some of them and millimeter wave radar sensors in others, depending on uh, the traffic in those particular rooms. Additionally, for millimeter wave radar sensors, uh, they are often much more difficult, much more difficult to use in comparison to PIR sensors. So if you are someone who's sort of new to creating smart home applications, then I highly recommend trying a PIR sensor before you transition over to a millimeter wave radar sensor. Uh, but these are all different considerations that you have to make yourself. Uh, as, you show, as we showed earlier, both of these sensors, sensing technologies, have very, very great applications. Uh, from earlier, we saw that millimeter wave sensor data in conjunction with machine learning could track people at a distance of over 50 meters away, which is not even visible to the human eye. So it's very clear that both of these sensing technologies work very well for uh, occupancy detection functions, but they do have some trade-offs between each other. This table right here serves as a very great summary uh, between the, showcasing the differences between millimeter wave and PIR sensing. Additionally, if you're in the market for something a little bit more expensive, you can see how uh, millimeter wave sensors and PIR do have a little bit more of an advantage compared to CCTV in some applications. Then this sort of goes into the conversation of which of these sensors is right for you. And ultimately the answer is it really depends on your application and how many applications you, that you have. As I mentioned earlier, uh, these PIR sensors are way more easy to use, they're more basic, and they're also much more cost effective. So if you're doing something that, if you're doing something that's pretty simple, like if you only want the lights to turn on when you enter the room and you don't want, uh, any measurements regarding how many people are in the room or anything like that are not necessary, then it might be easier to just go with a PIR sensor. It's easier to use. However, if you're trying to get some more detailed information or uh, you're interested in learning something new, I highly recommend using the millimeter wave radar sensors. You can get a lot more accurate information, a lot more details regarding how many people are in the room uh, and getting like movement data. But it is, again, as I mentioned earlier, just a little bit harder to use, and it's almost double the cost, as you can see here. So in summary, the choice between the two depends on the specific requirements of the application and the level of detail that's actually needed for your occupancy detection. If you need something that's simpler, maybe use PIR. If you need something that's a little bit more complex or you want to learn something new, uh, you can use millimeter wave sensing. Uh, all in all, if you do want to experiment with both of them, you can see that you can get both of them for just around $10 from DigiKey. So I highly recommend just experimenting with both of these sensors and then just figuring out which one works best for you. But that's pretty much it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Bye.